Hello and welcome back. Today I'll be doing something that I don't do very often, make dessert. You'll see why in a few minutes. Suffice to say that I'm not a big fan of the care and precision needed to make most desserts. I tend to cook by the seat of my pants. But that's why today's dish is perfect, because it requires little of those things. It is chocolate mousse, or as I'm calling it, imposter chocolate mousse. Unlike real chocolate mousse, this one contains no egg. Instead, it gets its richness and fluff from the combination of two ingredients. The first of these is mascarpone, a spreadable cheese which originated in northern Italy and whose closest North American equivalent is cream cheese. Unlike cream cheese, which is made with whole milk, mascarpone is made with heavy cream. This gives mascarpone roughly twice the fat content of cream cheese, which leads to a creamier, richer product. Mascarpone is also sweeter and less tangy than cream cheese. For my recipe, I'll be using one cup of mascarpone. The second ingredient is heavy cream, which will be turned into whipped cream. I'll need one cup. This helps to lighten the dessert and add even more creaminess. Beyond these two ingredients, there is, of course, chocolate. Because it's not a chocolate mousse without it. That's two 100 gram bars of dark chocolate. And yes, the eagle-eyed among you probably noticed I'm using two types. The first is 85% and the other 72%. There's no particular reason why, other than it's what I had available. Next there's sugar. This one's a little subjective and really depends on how sweet you like your mousse. Myself, I like it a little more on the sweet side, so I'll be putting in one quarter of a cup. Last but not least is flavorance. This is totally optional, and you can certainly make plain chocolate mascarpone mousse, and it'll still be delicious. However, I'm going to add orange, or at least a zest of a couple of oranges. Ideally, I'd also add a tablespoon or two of Grand Marnier, but my wife vetoed that ingredient because of our daughter. Alright, let's get going. First, we're going to need this orange zest, and we'll also need the chocolate, which I'll chop up first to make it easier to melt. Pardon the appalling lack of knife skill on display, I've never chopped chocolate on camera before, and I've certainly never chopped chocolate while standing behind a camera. Frankly, it's a miracle I didn't lop off a finger. To spare us both, I'll just go ahead and skip to the end, where the chocolate goes into a bowl, followed by about a tablespoon of heavy cream. I'll then microwave it in 20 second bursts, stirring it after each burst until it's melted. And here's the chocolate, nicely melted. I'll be honest and admit that this step did not work as planned. My non-talent for dessert making reared its ugly head and I accidentally overheated the chocolate to the point where it broke. After a brief but paralyzing panic attack, I put it over a double boiler and added, I don't know how much cream, maybe a quarter cup, and basically turned it into a ganache. This means the final mousse won't be as intensely chocolatey as I'd originally planned, but it should still be good. And it's at this point in the video, it's probably pretty obvious why I don't make too many desserts. But we're moving on. Next, I need to turn the heavy cream into whipped cream. The prudent thing to do would be to use a mixer to do this quickly. I'm going to be decidedly unprudent and do this the old-fashioned way, with a whisk. Because I'm determined to make this my most challenging cook yet. So pardon me while I take this away for a few minutes. Okay. Whipped cream and arm exercise done. I made a mistake, because of course I did, and forgot to mention that I added the sugar to the cream before I whipped it. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, we're finally ready for assembly. For that, I'll need a large metal bowl for the mascarpone. As well as the chocolate, which I'll fold in a few times to get it started. Then in goes the whipped cream, which I'm adding in two stages. The first is just to incorporate some air into the mix, while the second will add the real lightness. With that second stage, I'm adding the orange zest. Then it's back to folding, but just until everything is combined. I'm being careful not to overmix, because that could turn a mascarpone grainy. 
If that happens to you, mix in a little cream and that should smooth it out again. Or alternatively, you can just undermix and have a mousse that resembles stracciatella. For my mousse, once I'm done with the folding, I'll transfer it to some nice serving vessels. And here it is, faux chocolate mousse made with mascarpone cheese and flavored with a hint of orange. Ideally, this would have chilled in the fridge for a couple of hours, but it's nearing 1 in the morning as I film this, and I'm not about to wake up at 3 a.m. just to eat mousse, no matter how rich, chocolatey, and insanely tempting it is. And if you're wondering if it's as good as it looks... Oh yeah. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it's inspired you to make your own embossed or chocolate mousse. It's really not as difficult as I made it seem. If you do, please leave a comment and let me know how yours turns out. I'll see you next week.